In 2023, I'm bullish on Facebook ads, and that's coming from the guy who last year pivoted a big part of its marketing efforts, content efforts, and internal efforts at his seven and eight figure e-commerce marketing agency towards TikTok. I'm not gonna lie, last year was honestly quite the year for Facebook. Attribution was poor, Facebook didn't seem to really pick back up since what happened in 2021 with iOS 14. Everybody was getting tired of giving the platform time and a lot of people started to just move their ad spend towards TikTok. But with the recent wave of events talking about TikTok's potential ban and Facebook in itself finally getting their shit together, I really think that this is going to be a great year for Meta. And in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about exactly why I think that is, give you some concrete proof to back this up. So let's get straight into it. If you don't know who I am, my name is Justin and I'm the founder at Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. One of the first stats that I wanna bring on in this video is Common Threads Collective report looking over the last year they have hundreds of brands on their stat list tool. And they noticed that over the last year, ROAS has went up roughly 60% on Facebook. We're almost back to pre iOS 14 days, which is a very good indicator of overall performance of most brands on Facebook. And to get straight into proof number two, I wanna bring up North Beam's Media Buyer number 14 edition, which essentially I highly recommend you guys check out their newsletter if you're not yet subscribed to it. But every month they publish a new quote unquote media buyer update, which they walk you through the changes in stats across all ad platforms. They also walk you through some industry stats specifically related to e-commerce businesses. And those stats are aggregated across thousands of brands that are using North Beam to attribute their data properly. So one of the things that you can see from this stats is the budget share by platform. So even if you look to this day, the budget share is really emphasized on the Meta platform. So if you look at Meta specifically and across all of the brands using North Beam to attribute back their data, 66.4% of those brands' budget is spent on Meta, 24.5% on Google, 3.3% on TikTok, 4.3% on YouTube, 0.9% on Microsoft, which is Bing ads, and last but not least, 0.5% on Pinterest, which therefore somewhat means that they are still getting results on Meta because why would they be spending on a platform at a loss, right? Then I don't know what is. But it's very interesting to see that only 3.3% of people's budget is now spent on TikTok. There's a clear beast that not a lot of people in both the agency world and the brand world talked about. If you look at the last year, from an agency perspective, most agencies pivoted towards advertising their TikTok services, talking about how TikTok is the move. Again, I was guilty of that. I did that for a long time. And even today, I'm still not against TikTok. In fact, we have a lot of brands still advertising on there, but I'm a little bit more balanced, if you may. So a lot of agencies last year pivoted towards talking about TikTok, how TikTok is the wave. And if you were part of the direct to consumer community on Twitter, Every single brand owner was also talking about how TikTok was the way to go, how it was good for their brand. But then you look today and it's like only 3% of the spend really is on TikTok. And that kind of makes you think, was this just a highlight reel? Which I think it was. Both from an agency's perspective, I think that agency owners were now just showing in front of people all the TikTok case studies and all of the TikTok's prowesses. But if you looked in the back end, most of their spend was still on Meta. And probably the same thing happened with DTC brand owners talking on Twitter about how much better results were on TikTok, whereas truly they still kept most of their ad spend on Meta. To me, this really seems like there was a period of time where it's kind of like buying an expensive house but not having any furniture to put inside. So when people walk by your house down the street, they think that you're rich, that you've got shit handled down. But then when you get inside the house, they're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sit right. And that was kind of the same thing here. People were like, TikTok, 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 but then you walk through the agency or you walk through the brand itself and you're like, wait, you've been talking to me about TikTok this entire time, but you're actually spending a whole lot more money on Meta. TikTok is this good, why aren't you spending more on TikTok? And the truth is just that Meta is still better at their advertising platform. Not only have they always been better, in my opinion, they've really started figuring the stuff out in the last year. A third piece of proof I wanna bring up to you is also how Facebook seems to have really handled their attribution better. 
So I'm gonna throw you a screenshot on screen right now of our client that we've been working with for over a year and a half at this point. And we've been working with them since the end of 2021 all the way up to now. Uh, and have been using triple well pretty much this entire time. So we've been able to see the evolution of the disparity between data reported on triple well versus data reported on the app platform through that time. If you look at one of the months as an example of the first month of 2022, right? The disparity between the two was quite big. It was 1.6 ROAS on Facebook and 0.6 on Triple Wall. With that pretty much is a almost 3X difference between the two. Whereas if you now look for that same accounts a year and almost a half more, you can see that the Facebook reported ROAS is 2.65 and the Triple Wall ROAS is actually 2.94. So, which is quite funny once again, that account actually completely flipped around. Initially, Facebook ROAS was higher and Triple ROAS was much lower always than what was the report of ROAS on the platform itself. Now it's the opposite. Triple is actually reporting more than Facebook is. And in both of these examples, I'm using the same exact attribution model, which is Triple attribution plus views and using a seven day click model. So you can see how much closer now the results are comparing both meta and triple wall itself. Now, if we get into TikTok itself, TikTok is honestly on a fine line right now, as you know, within the US. Not only just the US, but the UK is also closely monitoring what's happening with the US situation right now with TikTok. So if you're unfamiliar about this entire thing, basically what the US government is requesting is that ByteDance, the parent company that owns TikTok, sells its share of the US division basically of TikTok to a US or an American company. So that's this way. The TikTok division in the US becomes US owned, therefore they have more control over the data itself that is on there. Again, that is what they claim because we all know this is not really what's happening behind that. It is somewhat of a political war between the US and China and, and TikTok is quite frankly just caught in the crossfire of it. But on the flip side, if you look at the list of websites blocked in China, you can clearly see that most of the big US tech companies are already banned in China. So if you think about Google, if you think about Facebook, if you think about Wikipedia, if you think about, I'm just reading some of the some of the names on the list right here, Reddit's, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Pinterest, Dropbox, Vimeo, Discord, Bloomberg, like they're, the list just goes on and on and on. Basically, in other words, most tech companies, most social media companies in the US are already blocked in China. So that kind of tells you if they're already doing that to the US, then the US somewhat has a right to do the same thing for Chinese owned businesses, right? And that brings the question, what will happen if TikTok does get banned in the US? It'll be three great things for most advertisers. One, you'll probably see lower CPMs on Facebook. Why? Every kid, every person that is now solely sold on TikTok will probably just drive right back to Instagram. So you'll most likely see a surge in users, therefore lowering CPM. That's one thing. Second thing, or actually before I even get into the second points, to also talk about the downfall of CPMs, it's if you look again at the ad spend share right now, only 3% of the entire industry's ad spend is put on TikTok. So it's not like you're also going to have a surge in ad spend on Facebook. At most, you're gonna have 3% more ad spend that will be allocated from TikTok that needs to be diluted somewhere else. Would that be Google? Would that be Facebook? Well, let's just assume all of that ad spend is gonna be shifted from TikTok to Meta. It's not that big compared to the amount of users that will search back to these platforms. Then my second point is all those creators that also are now just creating content on TikTok will now search back to Instagram. So what that will do is it, it, it will kind of stop this disparity on where are creators located? Because right now, if you look at these platforms like Incense, which is one of the platforms that we use at the agency for finding out UGC creators, it's like half of the community is divided on, on, on TikTok and the other half is like Instagram. If you look at it, some people are posting all their content on TikTok, the other half is posting all their content on Instagram. That creates again a division in the influencer pool that you have access to. Whereas if right now you just eliminate one of these two options, again, everybody's gonna be back on Instagram. It creates kind of a common ground for finding creators now. To be quite honest, I forgot what was the third point I was going to mention, but nonetheless, I think the point still stands. There are a lot of positive reasons that will come out of this ban, considering that most advertisers are still on Meta, whereas a lot of the user base is not anymore. So it's like your customers now are primarily using TikTok, but most of you are still spending on Meta because this is where you're seeing conversions. This is where you're seeing a better ad platform. So now if all of your customers are quote unquote forced to head back to one platform, 
they're meeting you exactly where you probably are still spending the most. And these developments around TikTok getting banned in the US are moving quite fast. So very recently, the state of Montana became the first state to actually ban the personal use of TikTok within the state, which basically within the state in itself, if you go into the app store, you won't see TikTok anymore. So what they've stated is that if you still have TikTok on your device, you won't be forced to uninstall TikTok, but they won't permit new installs of the app as of right now. And governments in Canada, again, the US, is all of these government officials now can't even have TikTok on their own devices. And that usually is layer one. If government officials are not allowed to do it, then sooner rather than later, probably the population won't also be allowed to do the same thing. And if the US does it, Canada, UK, usually all of these other main countries will follow the US's lead. So with that being said, those are all the reasons why I believe that Meta will be on the rise again in the next couple of months, in the next year or so. I'm very bullish on Meta ads moving forward. Most of our ad spend at the agency has always been on Meta, even though a bigger portion kind of started raising last year on the TikTok side, but now, not gonna lie, we did move some of that ad spend back to Meta over the last few months. So to end this video, if you're looking for an agency partner to run all of your ads for your e-commerce brand, check the link in the description down below and I'm booking a call with our team or if you just simply want to join a free community of e-commerce brand owners, marketers out there and get full access to our comprehensive e-commerce paid advertising course, then check out the first link in the description down below and join PCAT completely free of charge today. On that note, make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.